Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Town of Rhinebeck Special Town Board Meeting. It's uh, 1 p.m. on Wednesday, April 26th. Would everybody please stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Um, we called this meeting to um, codify a policy for our field usage. So uh, first of all, I want to thank and applaud Elaine Fernandez, because what we're doing here is new territory. We are sort of, uh, we're bringing the scheduling and the use of the fields, all of our fields, under the the eye of the rec department and what does that allow that allows us to know who's using our fields and when and how much they're being used and as we expand and develop our park and add more fields it, it gives us oversight and we need that we're, we're not sure how the scheduling's been done in the past but this will be under my rec uh, and um, it gives the town board and the town rec department oversight so it's our first year doing it, and um, we have also been meeting with the field partnership, which is the Rhinebeck Soccer League, the Rhinebeck Little League, and the Rhinebeck Lacrosse. And we are uh, developing an Adopt the Park program. Uh, we recognize that these leagues have been an invaluable partner to the town in uh, donating labor and funds to both develop and maintain the fields. So the policy that we come up with wants to recognize the partnership that we have with these Rhinebeck leagues and ensure that they have use of the fields for their league games. In effect, that's why we're developing the fields is to give them a home to play. So. Um, we have a policy here. I'd like to make a motion for resolution 2017-095, the Rhinebeck Recreation Department field scheduling policy. May I have a second? Second. Um, would you like to read this, Alan, or would sure, you like I'll me read. to? Or I mean, I think even let's skip ahead to the scheduling policy before we get to the resolution. Now, there are a couple of things in here I may want to change, but I want to make sure that this covers what we need to yeah. do. So, so this this would be the Rhinebeck field scheduling policy. Uh, first, all scheduling is done on the Recreation Department website, www.rhinebeckrec.com. Uh, there's also a link to that website from the town website. Um, two, in consideration for their contributions to the maintenance of the playing fields, the below listed Rhinebeck Youth Sports Leagues will be given preference in the, for field scheduling as detailed herein. Three, Rhinebeck Soccer League will be allowed to reserve soccer, soccer fields in advance of the general public as follows. Uh, from April 1st to April 29th for the spring season running from May 1st to June 30th. Public scheduling for this season will be open on the 30th of April. May 1st to May 30th for the summer season th that runs from June 30th through Labor Day. Public scheduling for this season will be open on May 31st. And, and last, August 1st through August 30th for the fall season running from Labor Day through November 31st, public scheduling for that season will be open on August 31st. Four, the Rhinebeck Little League will be allowed to reserve baseball fields in advance of the general public as follows. A, March 1st through April 14th for the spring season running from uh, April 15th through July 16th, the public scheduling will be available on April 15th, and B, April 1st through August 30th for the fall season, running from September 1st through October 31st, public scheduling for this season is open on August 31st. Five, the Rhinebeck Lacrosse League will be, whatever consideration we have for them will be determined later. Um, six, Reservations are limited to four hours and may be made and may not be made back to back. Rhinebeck-based leagues may schedule six-hour slots to accommodate two games in succession. Seven, fields may not be used for athletic activity for 24 hours after heavy rain. 
the recreation director will determine whether rainfall constitutes heavy rain. Eight, and I'm reworded this a little because it was a typo. So field reservation fees will be levied for users as follows. A, users reside in the town of Rhinebeck, $30 an hour. User resides in Dutchess County, but not Rhinebeck, $48 an hour. And user outside of Dutchess County, $50 an hour. And then the last fields left damaged or littered will result in, in additional charges for cleanup and or repair. That's it. Does this accurately affect what you need? I talked. I talked to Michael DeCola and I talked to Tom Connolly, and I based the schedules off their schedule. And again, for the public, the scheduling consideration given to these leagues is uh, is in recognition of your years of financial and volunteer labor contribution. We are partnering with you to develop and maintain the fields yes. for your use. So, um, Mike DeCola gave input, then I stand by his input. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have a. Um, I, I have um, just I, I, number eight. We seem to contradict number three here, so I might change it to field use fees for groups other than the Rhinebeck Soccer League, Rhinebeck Little League, and Rhinebeck Lacoste are as follows. Okay. And I, I, I don't know about charging town residents um, because I, I just feel we're not there yet. We don't have all the information. Okay. Um, and I think within the resolution, we have also said that at any time, the liaison to this, the town board liaison to this, the supervisor and the rec director can amend this. So I, I yeah, just, that's in the resolution. Yeah, I, and I also want to say that we're being um, uh, liberal with our scheduling policies this year because it's the first year we're doing it, and we want to make sure that you have what you need. And next year, we might ask to shorten it a little bit. So we'll ask you to pay attention. Um, <coughs> I, that's my input. Does anybody else? Yeah, I guess I got a couple of questions. Can the leagues schedule everything sometime in March Joe, uh, rather than? Um, Joe, they can't. That's why we have uh, this uh, down. Uh, uh, We've done all the work. We've talked to everybody. This has been days of research. So, okay, I. Uh, yeah. So Roger Kwan, uh, resident of Rhinebeck. Uh, it's hard for us to know the exact times for all the schedules. A lot of it can be scheduled, especially for uh, recreation, so in-house uh, activities. But when we're engaging other communities, we're, we're one party of a larger organization. So it's hard for us to know a priori the schedule. We don't dictate that. We would love to. Uh, what we would be, you know, as a, as a community partner, certainly uh, we have a sense for when these events occur, uh, usually Sunday afternoons. Uh, and then as we get clarified information, certainly as a, a good community member, we would um, R release the time Again, that we don't need. It's a very liberal scheduling yeah. season this year because we don't know, and we'll look to tighten it up next year. There's an open enrollment, and then the league has to be able to schedule with their other teams right. within the league. So and at Stone Church, hold sure. on, Joe, Alan. No, let him finish. You? At Stone Church, there is one field that is a soccer field. Uh, 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 That's I'm not correct. Sure of the, the layout. Um, I got a call yesterday from somebody, uh, a, a, a adult who plays soccer, and I think they play after you guys play, uh, and I'm, I'm not sure what day of the week, and they seem to be very disturbed at, um, uh, over two things. One, uh, the possibility of a fee 
on them as town residents. So, you know, if we take it out, that resolves it. But if we want to have a fee, I think the fee should be just for reserving it. Uh, the other thing is, I think what they do is, I don't think they reserve it, but if the field is empty, they go play after you guys. Does that need a reservation? Uh, that was one question. And then they were told that they have to have a certificate of insurance to use the fields. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, I think, more of an ad hoc group uh, that plays. Do we re Require this, and should we? Because this is not an organized. I, I don't uh, believe uh, that we need to, and we we can double check with our insurance. We carry general liability, so that if people who aren't members of leagues want to go and have a pickup game, I believe they are covered, and we oh, need okay. to double check that. Um, that's the reason why we also have to build the parks and maintain them, because that's part of the liability. So we build them, we maintain them, we ensure that they're well kept up, and we also carry the general liability. It's different for an organized league. Organized leagues have to have their own general liability and name us as additionally insured loss payee. Um, so uh, I, let me just, can I yeah. address the other thing? Yeah, sure. I believe if you don't reserve the field, of course you can go and have it as a pickup game, but if someone shows up and they's re they've reserved it, yeah, you're bumped. You know. That's just how I believe the policy should be. So, you know, it would behoove you to check the schedule and reserve it. If you don't, you know. You're at risk for yeah. losing yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, that sounds sensible. You know, and also, I, I, I think, I think, I really feel like we should not be charging Rhinebeck residents at this juncture just because we don't know how much, um, this is going to cost us to maintain, and we don't yet, we haven't really defined the partnership between the field, partnership and the town for the Adopt the Park program. Um, and, you know, ta Rhinebeck tax money has gone. Residents have paid for this already. All right, so you want to you want to get the, the users? I would, I would motion to take out the user fees for Rhinebeck residents. Okay. I don't know how I feel about non-Rhinebeck residents, and I don't know that for Stone Church I would delineate between county and non-county because I don't believe that we have county money for that, although I could be incorrect. I think we may need to do a little bit more due diligence on here before we <coughs> come up with a fee schedule. I don't disagree with it, but I don't have the information right. I need to decide. So we can we can take that, that, that whole Section 8 what out? What do you guys think about that? Joe? Uh, well, you could have it, and then we could change it at the next meeting. I don't know. Well, uh, part of this resolution uh, says that the supervisor, the liaison, and the rec director can revise any part of this policy without a board, you know, just so that we're not held up for board meetings. Well, I, I guess that part I do have a problem well, with. Well, let's talk about one part at a time. Let's talk okay. about the fees. Uh, I could go either way. If we could take it out completely or keep it for uh, uh, other people. I think maybe we ought to take it out completely so when we're set, the entire board can make a decision. So I guess I would take it out at this point. Well, Alan? I, I'm, I'm fine either way, the, I, but I do think it ought to be a reservation fee, not a usage fee, so that when they go on to my rec to make the reservation, they can pay then and have the reservation. Uh, and then if they, and then we, I think we should add a, a, a provision that says usage of an idle field without a reservation is allowed, but such usage may be preempted by, by a scheduled, by a scheduled uh, user. Um, How are you going to, are you suggesting you're going to refund the, the deposit if they're reserving it? Pardon me? Are you suggesting if, 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 in other words, if the fee is only to reserve it, that suggests that once 
they show up, they'll get the feedback. No, no, it's a non-refundable. Okay. So it's not just to reserve it, it's to use it. Right. Okay, that's what I'm trying to find out. It's to use it with a reservation. If you show up with a team, a pickup team, and right. you don't have a reservation and the field's idle, sure, go ahead. So anybody who reserves it in the system pays the fee? Pays the fee in the system. That way we don't have to have a cashier at the fields. But that would be assuming that we decide to have a fee. Right. And uh, so people who just come with the pickup thing, no fee, but they got to leave if uh, somebody has yeah. reserved. Um, so I, I guess I'm lost. Why would there be ever a refund? There would, well, there's I, was, I, I was confused by the Just to make the reservation. That, I was confused, that's all. I just misunderstood. Oh, okay. Why are you calling it a reservation fee as opposed to a usage fee? Yeah, that's where I get Because if you... Because if, You're talking about the mechanism for collecting yeah, the fee. But, it could still all be done on Rhinebeck no matter what we call it. All right, then. Okay. Well, uh, but I think maybe the reason was because if it's a pickup game and they don't, they don't have to pay a, a fee if they're willing to be bumped. All right, so, uh, so that, that's why we're not. I don't think that's so. why I think he wants a call. All right, I'll, a I'll call field reservation and usage fees. Okay. Matt, that? What do you feel about fees? I like the reservation usage fees as one. Yeah, okay. Just I, one. I, I, I just think we pull this out for now until we've got more information. Okay, I'm good with that. I mean, we don't, we have to look at what money we've gotten from the county, yeah. what our, um, <clears throat> right, what our obligations are to county residents. Right, the county, because the county contributed to the to purchase the of the land in Thompson Mazzarella Park, yeah, they, there's a, an agreement between the town and the county about fees. So let's just uh, leave the anyway. field use fees for groups other than Rhinebeck Soccer League, Rhinebeck Little League, and Rhinebeck Lacrosse will be as follows. And then just take out A, B, and C for now. Um, or leave it at zero to be d decided. Yeah, we'll be. TBD. Yeah. Oh, yeah, let's put TBD in there. Um, are, I think we also need an amount for damaged or littered fields or not. And the rain usage, um, I know. How are we going to post whether or not the fields are usable? Is that on my rec? That can easily be posted on my rec. I would have no problem doing that. Okay. My bigger question around that is, like, how, who, I mean, I understand that you want me to determine if the fields are too wet, and I don't have a problem doing that. The only problem that I can foresee, um, at least based on the experience I have up to now, is that what I may consider to be too wet, being a non-soccer player or a sports person, may be very different from what a sports person would consider to be too wet. So I may see something that looks really drenched and say, I think this is way too wet to play, and I'm just anticipating and trying to prevent the fallout that will occur if somebody says she's not letting us play on the field and they're not that wet. So I would either like to des let the team designate somebody they think it's too wet, yeah. or um, somebody define what too wet means. Right. So that I, I think it's so subjective. Decide. Exactly. Hold on. I got, I got a bunch of hands out here. Uh, John? So you th you're advocating that I'm sorry. Do you mind? Do you mind? Come, yeah, can you come up to, to the? You. Oh, can you come up to the? Um, just introduce yourself because I know you have a lot of valuable information. My name is John Nansen. I've been involved with the Rhinebeck soccer for over 35 years. I've seen it happen. Once the field's trashed, once you let somebody in, you trash it. We can try and fix it, but it's going to be fouled for the rest of the year. So, so automatically you, in the front. You're are you advocating reservations and use fees f for everything? No, I'm saying for the pickup, we have to carry million dollar insurance coverage right. for all of our fees. That, yeah, That's I'm saying, Church, so you believe that we sh shouldn't allow non-scheduled use on so that we know who's on there? Right. So, and somebody should put up money ahead of time. Okay. And if it happens, it's going to come out of their fee that they're paying. Okay. There should be a damage waiver. There should be a responsible person that is the contact person and be able to go back to that club and say, okay, it was fine there and you've trashed it. 
your money that you put up front is now going to be used for. But what if five people show up and want to play? That's the thing. Do you have million dollar coverage? Does the town have million yeah, dollar coverage? Yeah, we do. We do. We do. For liability and all? Of course. We're all right. a municipality. Well, we carry a huge. Well, we ha I think we have more, you know, yeah. Question is how how much rain is is enough to allow? Uh, wait, to, uh, you to know, I want to stick with this for a second. I just okay. want to be clear. So you're advocating that everybody have to Perfect. reserve Except for a the field. established leagues that are here. Right. Well, this is we're yes we're we're in consideration these. of the Rhinebeck Soccer League, Rhinebeck Little League, and Rhinebeck Lacrosse's contribution to developing and maintaining the fields. This is for everybody else. You guys are still going to have to reserve it. You're, I just want to be clear that you're advocating that anyone who used the field reserve it and pay a reservation fee. And they should have some kind of waiver in there that's for additional cost. They should have to put up an amount that if you have to bring fill in there, excavation, anything else to repair it. To I, make I don't it know that they can. You know, I don't. I don't know about that. I think that might be the town. That might be between the town and the field partnership. If you look at some of the cars that come up there, they've got very out-of-state plates. Yeah. Maryland could be anywhere. I know, but I've there are laws governing public parks. That's why we have to look at this more. We have mm -hmm. to look at this more. We can't. It's not our aim to exclude people. It's our aim to. I mean, how has it been? Nobody's been up until this point. There has been nobody reserving them through the town or putting up anything. So this is a step towards that, at least, right? Yep. As a rule, generally, we've given a schedule to the town of what's going on. What most of ours for our associations don't come out until the late in April time frame. So we don't have a confirmed thing I've until never April seen time. a schedule. I don't know. Do they for my son? Uh, I'll speak to this so, but well, that's but why that, ours don't really come out until the April time frame in for the fall season there. It's to the association. Who do you give it to? So, okay. But anyway, thank, thank I, I th you. Thank this you. is a, a, a bit of a red herring. So we all want to be um, engaged and, and collaborating with, with uh, the town uh, so that there is a public resource. Okay, so as the history is, yes, the, the league uh, was very invested and, and I think uh, a lot of John's body parts are still left out there on the field there uh, in creating Stone Church. So. I have to appreciate and recognize No, he's that. the historical knowledge, yeah. you know, the, the institutional knowledge. So um, A lot of the communications have been largely informal. Um, we've had a Google calendar, and it's been communicated to town agents. Whether it's checked or not, I don't, I don't know. Uh, but can, do you know who in the town? Well, at the time, say, uh, the former recreation director, yeah, probably, yeah. Alice. Uh, I believe I probably copied the town clerk. Uh, I, okay. I, I, I can so it's out. It's out it, it's, there. It's out there in the ether, so to speak. But I'm not. Obviously, it's not. We're not accounting. The town's not been accounting. Uh, the the known usage, right? Uh, to John's John's point, I mean, there's a lot of history here where there's a fence that was installed in in collaboration with the town, in part because we'd come back after winter, and you'd see it torn up by snowmobiles and trucks doing. Wheelies, so there is a sensitivity there, uh, you know. Yeah, and we want to respect and that and want, build on this. Right. That's and what so we're, we're all we're all game to to build on on this history, and, and I'm sure that we're going to learn in this process on how to best maintain and, and use the field. Um, the field is owned by the town, so you know, respect your uh, sovereignty in this this point. Uh, our <laughs> we still respect it. Um, and, and I think John's comments are motivated by this, this sincere desire to see it in a playable condition for the kids, right? Uh, and that everyone has some, some skin in the game to, to see that it's respected and maintained. So collectively but, the field? But collectively the field partnership, um, I think uh, we don't have a firm policy. We, we need to... I think, as you mentioned earlier, learn what the usage is, who's using it formally. Um, ideally, we'd like to know who's using it informally. Uh, we can work with you and document, hey, we scheduled it. We took this picture at five minutes before our reservation. This is the state. And we can start to build a database, some evidence, um, so that we can better appreciate where it is 
uh, the state of the field before and after. Um, historically, we just suck it up, we clean it up, we seed it, we roll it, uh, we maintain it, we do what we need to do so that it's, it's serviceable. Um, so uh, we're, we're, we're obviously willing and, and looking to work with the town on this point. I mean, this is in effect really so, you know, we're building more fields and we, we're expanding our park. So we're trying to um, make sure that the rec director and the rec committee and the town board have a record and oversight of all of our park lands so that it can be utilized by our, our teams. You're, you're aware. Hold on, Joe, hold on one second. Michael? I've got a suggestion. Could you come up? Michael DeCola. Um, so Elaine, I think right now, the way we handle rain closures, and we do them specifically with, uh, in mind of like a Baptist, of preserving the condition of fields. So the, the, the league president will tell coaches the condition of the field is not playable and will be damaging to the, to the season field, to the season use of the field. Um, so I think, and we're out there assessing that on a relatively regular basis, especially at the beginning of the spring season, which is the time when the fields can be most damaged because the grass is just starting to grow and depending on wind, snow. And, uh, so I think the easiest way uh, to do this, at least to start this and not leave it on your shoulders, is that we copy you on those league closures and that you incorporate them into the town fields because we're doing it based on um, preserving the resource anyway uh, uh, and that way you wouldn't be on the hook for making a, a closure that we didn't think was necessary but we're going to want to make the closure if it's necessary so there's a there's a there's a win-win so in if that. you want to keep that and let Elaine and the clerk's department know for updating my you know my rec it's, and our town website yeah, it's simple that let's we try copy that the rec department and the town clerk on any field closures that we feel like we're making anywhere in the town, and then when you can follow suit with the town fields, and we're all on the same page. That's fine. It's I don't think we have to change the wording. Well, no. I think we. The other we think thing. we should change it to rec director will post. Rec director and clerk, based on the information provided by the leads, I think that should be in there. Yep. And that. That would be perfect. Yeah. Do you put up a, a closed that. sign on the hold field? On no, and, and, we and hold on. Hold on. We're the on ones on the field second. every day, so it. it Makes sense. Hold on we should second. get a sign that says closed. Oh, oh, Alan, hold on. Joe, what did you want to say? Was it a question for me or something? No, um, uh, Joe was interrupted. I mean, I took No, I'll let question. Alan uh, finish. I, I, I'm on a totally different topic. Okay. We, we should buy some signs that say closed. We keep them at the field and let you guys, <clears throat> if, you, if you think the field ought to be closed, to protect it. Closed open. Closed today. Closed, open. closed today. Pardon Thank me. you. Um, yeah, fine. Robert Murray, a town of Rhinebeck resident. Uh, first of all, thank you. We see this um, resolution as an opportunity to continue partnering. We spend a lot of effort and money, and we we see the. I think I'll I'll encourage the parents, the registrants, the coaches, the people who run Rhinebeck Soccer League, and the other sports uh, groups to see this as our continued, uh, how we'll pay for it. We have to wrestle with our kids and parents and registration fees. Um, but the use, we're very protective. We canceled the first two games of the season because we know that we would ruin the field. I think a concern of ours is always other groups, undocumented or unscheduled, will, will maybe not care. So the idea, Alan, your idea of a sign is great. Uh, we'd love to help even with that effort. Elaine, I would encourage you to look to um, the people who make these decisions for the league as your resource, and, and they will gladly say, yeah, it's a bad idea. Let's get the closed sign up so no one uses it, re reserved or not. So even a reservation that's paid maybe needs to be canceled if the and fields. Refunded. Yeah. And that's an opportunity for Absolutely. a refund. Yeah, let's just be clear, though, about the process that we do. It's like, I think what Michael said works best. I don't want to have to reach out to you guys, a billion of you. Have yep. to, I don't even know. Yeah, here's, just, you are just, need, just, just yeah. need to come we are to happy, and copy me. So hold that on. When you're closing something. We are happy to have the league take the lead in all of yeah, this. Exactly. And we are happy to let you 
drive the policy and we'll support it. I mean, you're, you're the experts on it. We're just trying to codify it and formalize it and expand it. It's, it's as simple as adding rec director and town clerk to the league-wide email that goes out regarding field use. And it's so easy for us to do that. Good. I really appreciate you guys seeing, that, seeing us as a resource. Yeah, yeah I mean, you're, we're following your lead. We're, doing, we're developing these fields for you. You know? I mean, somebody has to. One last thing on that note, too. Please only copy me on your closures. I don't want to start getting all your correspondence. <laughs> <laughs> so I got enough really email. Really, Elaine? <laughs> Come on. Come on. Is that about the U6 <laughs> so, uh, again, I want to say thank you. Um, Robert, can I just interrupt one sure. second? Uh, just on that topic. Who is going to be responsible for putting up the sign closed? Is that the league going to put that sign up on the field? Well, I think that's, so. That's, we could be. I think you should be. Um, this but is that would, that, I mean, it's your field, so if we're the ones closing it, you've got to be on page with us doing it. Yeah. Regarding, that, regarding that sign, I think it should say, field closed today. Not just feel closed. That means, oh, we can never use well, it. It's today. I think it's closed it today. It's put up on Tuesday, and it's just, well, it'll be you know closed and open. You when know, the maybe we'll go through a, um, an iteration of signs. We'll try one. It may not work. We try another. Yeah. Um, but I think <laughs> we're, we will always remain concerned with overuse of the fields. So I think the idea that we're, uh, and, I, and I expect that this next year will be an experiment, and we hope to be your partners in yeah. that experiment. Um, some of the feedback residents might have parents of soccer players. Wow, why are we playing, paying fees? Why isn't the dog park or the little league or the walkers? I want to suggest that this is a good start and that what happens next year, we don't know yet. But I think the, to encourage groups, even small groups of six, to pay their $20 or $30 uh, it's something maybe we all want to figure out how to encourage so we can reinvest so the town can see it fit we to reinvest. We don't have the information we need yet about what we it We don't costs. either. Yeah, so I, I'm loath to levy fees on people. No, and without, I think it's premature, you know, but yeah. I, I guess I'd, I would say on, as the treasurer of the soccer league, <laughs> um, I would tell you, one, we haven't registered kids for this year with the knowledge of a fee. So that's a, a challenge for us. But we're not charging you a fee. No, the, the proposal is the leagues won't no, be charged a fee. Field right. use for groups yeah. other than the Rhinebeck Soccer League. I'm Rhinebeck going to sit Little, down now. <laughs> Thank you, though. We're, you we're in support of so, so, so I have, I have a question about closed signs. You monitor the fields every day? Well, so um, it depends on the choice that we Yeah, come on. So, so let's say it rains on a Monday morning, and you're not, you're not scheduled to use the field till Sunday. Um, Right, so or it, whatever. It, yeah, it, it's it's a lot to ask us to close the field down when we're not using it. In this in this yeah, adopt the park agreement, maybe we can work out a way that that happens. Well, we could send somebody from the maintenance department to yes. do that as no, well. No, no, we no. can't. Okay. So you can't, but we cannot. So during the season. Um, the reason we cannot is because there's overtime issues, yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff I, is done on nights and the weekend, and we want to mitigate this. No, this I'm, is part of what, you know, yes. you'll be doing for us to maintain. Yes, yeah, so the, the, right now I believe we have uh, two or three teams that are using Stone Church. Um, and so they're there on several weeknights uh, after school for practices, and then there are the games on Sunday. Um, so certainly there are a number of days during the week when there's a coach there and can take the sign down or if the, a, 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 a practice is being canceled can put it up. Um, and we can try and figure out a way to allocate work for putting that sign up. The problem is that if we're not having a practice, nobody goes to the field. So putting the sign up. Look, we'll, have extra to, we'll have to figure it out. Yeah. Maybe um, we don't need a sign. Maybe it's I, We'll have to yeah. figure it out. I, the, 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 the we want to help you do that, and I think the first step is to know that when we're closing the field because of weather, uh, that we inform the rec department so they can put up a public notice. So we also need to talk to the school, and I have that on my list. I'm at a meeting next week with the mayor 
and the school superintendent, you yeah. know, and continuing and starting up again our joint meetings. And one of it is going to be you can't use our field. You, they're going to have to schedule, and they can't use it as because a cover. their fields wet. Right. Yeah. No, that, their fields wet. Our fields wet too. Right. <laughs> Usually. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and and there is differences, but yes, I think that that's uh, that already is a huge step in in our cooperative. Okay. Um, stewardship of that resource. So I think that that's a really. So you think that this is on the right track and we're good to pass this as is? Or are there any other changes? I didn't get to hear it because I walked in late. Okay. But I'd love to, to read the whole thing. Good, take a look. Yeah. Um, I'll take two seconds. Sorry. Robert, seconds. Roger, you guys have any more input? John Nance and um, No general input to the resolution. Again, I think we're going to learn through this year. I think we also have some positive ideas to help um, track usage, even when we're not there. Uh, and then third, in the reservation system, no fees is fine uh, by my... We could change it. We could and, change and it in have, the summer. We could change it next change month. It. Uh, one suggestion, however, is uh, we charge historically really low fees for our programs for kids. Uh, for instance, under six-year-old children, pay $50, they get eight sessions. That's really cheap in this day and age. But we also, when we go through this registration process, we give the, the parents an opportunity to make a donation if they're inclined. So I believe if my rec is similar to the systems that we use, you can probably suggest a, you know, a question, would you like to make a donation? Suggest it. They don't have a donation key. It's, it's better for them to contact you. What I can do is no. add on your page. Um, uh, you can add, you can donate, and here's how. Put your contact information. But there won't, there's not an option for them. Like what you're talking about, there's generally an option for them to click on and donate through PayPal, for example. Right. That's not available on my own. Oh, So what I can okay. do is refer them to you and say, if you'd like to make a donation, contact so-and-so. Or a link. Right. Yeah. But we're not charging you for field No, use, no, right? I'm, but I'm just saying it is, is um, you, you just put out the thought just like you go to the museums and some of the New York City, the admission fees are recommended, right? You can, doesn't prevent anyone from chipping in five bucks or whatever they can afford or wish to, to contribute to helping maintain the fees. You have to trigger the thought that not everything's free. The, the only thing I would caution you about that before you, before you decide to say yes to something like that, on my rep, for example, is you're gonna have other people that are gonna say, why can't I do this or now I wanna do this. And you have to decide what yeah, I'm not necessarily. I'm not a. We're a government. I'm not. not I don't no, feel, not donation to hold us. Hold on, hold on. A donation to the town. Hold on. I, I right. feel that there has to be a. Me personally, we collect taxes and fees to provide our services. I, I'm. I don't want to turn us into a, a non-for-profit. Right. That, that's my point of view. So I did have a chance to read it while Roger was talking. The one, um, the one suggestion I would make, since we're talking about a schedule of the field use, is that the fields be closed uh, from a period in, in December through that beginning of April. And we usually don't open our fields till the, it ends up being about the second week mm -hmm. of April. Um, and that that be to prevent there being any kind of damage um, during that period. So. Um, and that should be all town sports fields um, that are natural grass. Um, so I would include that. It's, it's, it, it might, it, it, it's a good time to throw it in there, and it, it tidies up another problem that we have in terms of winter use. Well, when do you off, stop season. using the fields? Our seasons usually end sometime uh, by the first or second week of December, depending on whether there's state cup games that are happening out there. Um, and they don't usually start up like this, this year, we had the league had scheduled games in the beginning of April, and we closed all the fields and had to cancel them and reschedule them. So the fields open up in April depending on weather for games. Um, I think that the town should say that through the month of March and sometime from the middle of December through the month of March, say, the Let's just say all fields are closed for the general public from December 15th to April 15th. It's I would say March 30th. Yeah, I guess I had a problem with you could have, that. You could have, yeah, you, you could have a really year nice warm spin, but I think you're very safe with um, the middle of December through the end of March um, with a grass field, and that will help us. Tell taxpayers that from four months, they, I mean, I've had 
They're grass off. fields, and if they're used when they're wet, they will be destroyed. Be destroyed. Well, I understand, but you're we also about close our months. yes. Yeah. We also close our tennis time. courts and our you know we don't because it's a. Because oh, it's, you do, you close the yeah, because it's a it's, the close, it's a season. The, uh, the park is closed. closed. The, the park's closed. It's a three season park. I just know I've had a few people that tell me. In fact, I think it was the woman who came, Susanna Renzi. Somebody that came here that day that we had the meeting mentioned something about using those um, fields in the wintertime sometimes just to brush up and keep up on the practice. So the fields yeah. are, the well, fields if are they closed. did that, if they did that in the early spring, say they would and destroy it, them. It, it, it will. They it would be very. It, it, yeah, it damages right. the grass, uh, and we don't we don't do that. Our, 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 our winter sessions are indoors. And we do that even, okay, if, we, even if we have a really taken. warm. I think yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. good point. Okay. All right, so but, but I, I just, uh, on, on this date, so, you know, I know like the Red Hook Golf Club, they open not on a specific day, but depending on the condition of the field. I hate to set arbitrary dates of closing and opening since the weather is different and maybe you know the sports leagues can advise the rec director i think we could have a general suggestion sure. and then we can override it I, I think i understand your concern joe the dates i gave you are um super super conservative in size they're small in other words okay, um, there's it. almost no year where you're going to be able to go out and play without damaging the grass on April 1st. Uh, it, it, it is, there, it, it's very unusual. And if you have a year where that's true and the weather even feels like great because it's dry and it's, you have an 80 degree day like we did a week, week and a half ago. Yeah. Um, if that happens in March, chances are that's a day where everybody goes out, the grass hasn't had a chance to recover or grow, and you do do damage. So those dates are not, um, they're not arbitrary at all. So, uh, so here's what I would add to the policy. Uh, athletic fields are closed from December 15th to March 30th. Dates can vary as 31st. a function. 31st, excuse me. Dates can vary as a function of weather and field condition. And How does this get no, I'm serious. That's a serious question because there's no fencing, there's no lock. How does this get enforced? I can tell you right now from everything I've heard from the people that have been coming to me that have been using those fields, and as John just expressed, people take the liberty of going there all the time, walk their dogs, ride their snowmobiles. How are we going to enforce this? Do we have to fence these fields in? It's not locked. You couldn't lock it down. We're going to have to lock it down. Yeah, well, that's what. Well, we'll put. Well, Absolutely. we'll put we'll put the closed signs yeah. on and leave them there uh, all week. One person all at a time. One person. We didn't feel I'll, like I'll, it was our right to lock a town field. No, it's um, not. But, but the it's, gate I'm is. Talking about no, the past. I'm talking no, no. About right now, calls, right now, it. right now, you could lock those fields. I think we. We didn't put the a lock on it because it's not. Oh, there it. are fields that we do lock. Yep. So um, the lock is the answer. But I think there's a lock, a keyed lock, with several keys. Town Hall, the Rec Director, Maintenance, and whoever the field partnership wants to have it. Yeah. Well, but we're only talking about locks during the winter, not yes. during yes. the summer. Yeah. Or, or when it's raining, we can lock them to stop use on a rain date, too. Hold on, Michael. Hold on, John. Can you can you come up? It's, Hold it's on, hard Joe. to it's hard to hear. Him. Well, we can't hear you otherwise. Yeah. And the, you also have to condition that people that have bigger dogs that don't use the dog park and come out and use a soccer field and the big dogs tear that up. Then the fields maybe should be locked and opened for reserved games. Like we're going to have to look at this. The dogs have been a huge problem. And a huge that, problem. They leave that out there, and they don't clean up. I know. They just leave those big droppings there, and then when you have a ball player, you don't we know whether that signs. dog has cancer. We have cancer. fine signs going up, and we have five signs. We just Bobby Fitzpatrick has them. We just got them last week. And I want to tell you that the signs in the Thompson Mazzarella Park have been effective. Yeah, We've had have huge worked. efficacy with them. So we're working on that. Like I'm not opposed. I'll take. Again, we're a board speaking for myself. You guys have to set the policy with locking the fields. I'm not opposed to it. We're protecting 
a town asset. We have um, an agreement to use a field at um, fairgrounds, and um, and that has to be locked on every entrance and exit and unlocked by the. the <coughs> so you can. So we would that's definitely something that's been in the in the institutional knowledge and. and can the little the, league fields be locked as well? I don't think the front of them can be locked. You'd have to fence them all completely. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, fence around, the soccer field is fenced from entrance. You could, you could walk around, I guess, and find your way in, but it'd be very hard. Have to work really it looks hard like you it. guys made some gates. Like there seems, when I went up there, it looked like there were gaps. There's a turn style gate that you can walk through easily, but that can also be locked. If we have a player entrance that was yeah. specifically made when we put that in, down as you go there, there is a gate on that. Most of the time it's left open. But there is a player entrance also, so that the young players can get in there prior to right, when the actual. To be figured comes. out, but you yeah. know, no, it can be locked. let's do it. I right, but, I wanna, but I want to make sure that uh, this men's group that seems to play. I don't know if you're aware of it. Uh, There's several men's groups. There. Yes, that they are. They can play up there. When they make a reservation. Well, I'm saying. Uh, why do they have to make a reservation? Because of everything well, we've just been talking minute, about. No, but they're subject to being kicked off if the league has reserved. John Hansen had given us a recommendation based on his 30 years of experience with the fields that we should be monitoring everyone who goes on the field and that there's a responsibility. I don't disagree. Uh, uh, can I, can uh, okay. I speak to that a little bit? Yeah, should, okay. Gary should come up and talk about it too. But. A lot of the coaches who work with the kids are on the, are on the men's league. Like there's a there's a lot of, and we don't want that. We don't want exclusive use of this field. What we want is the is the ability to be able to schedule games and practices for the organized activities, and just be able to do that in a way because. That is organizationally very different than someone who wants to come and have a Sunday pickup game and reserve the field. It's very different. And it's also very different from an outside of Rhinebeck league that wants use of the field for their games. And they should be able to schedule that too. What we're saying is because of the uh, volunteer investment and, and, and monetary investment, which is in the many, many thousands of dollars. Your financial partnership. Yeah, it's, financial we, we've and worked with you guys. On, so, in, in, in understanding of that, that we get to schedule those, that, those league activities. We're not, we're, this is what this is about. Yeah, yeah this just, is. no, but I, I mean, I understand Joe's concern, and what you're, what you're giving is um, an understanding of how difficult that organizational problem is of putting a whole league of kids together and making that happen. Yeah. That's all we're asking for. We don't <coughs> want to kick the men's leagues out. We do want them not to play on the fields when it's going to damage them. Right, we're going to... Which you want to. We're going to do the close. Yeah, which you want thing. to. And so that's I don't it. think... I, I think it's getting confused. I, I think I'm in sync with what you're saying, that uh, you don't care if these men league play uh, as long as they're not interfering with your schedule. Yes, now, I, the one thing I will add to that yeah. is that if a league like the men's league or the church league that was using the field is using it regularly. There is a burden that that puts on that resource. And since we and the town, we being the soccer league and the town, have been the only ones putting, inputting into that it's tax stewardship. tax money and fees to do it. That's why we would levy that fees on There another. needs to be a way, if you're going to formalize that, there needs to be a way that you ask those people to participate we, we, in we, that. We've dealt with this, and what we're saying is we're just not ready to do it. We don't have I enough know, information. I, I, but that's what we need to be working yep. toward. Yeah, in it's the next not, couple it's of weeks. It's a penalty fee. It's, uh, it's a cooperative unless you want it, in, Unless you want to up taxes and do it all with tax money. This is how no, it makes sense. And you'll find... You'll find All right. Let me just let me. Thing. We're going to give you accounting of the of the kind of hours and and uh, financial input we've been putting into Stone Church, and you will find that what the league does in terms of man hours and money will far exceed whatever fees you'll charge to anyone else for the use of that We're field. We're on board. Yeah. Uh, Michael, you don't have to convince me. My grandchildren have played in the soccer league. I think it's well organized. I think it's absolutely terrific. 
uh, that you guys have done this, it's organized, and so I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of it, but I just want to make sure, and I think we've resolved it, that the men can play uh, and uh, uh, there shouldn't be any problem. Is there anything else we want to add to this? Any other questions? Did anybody else in the audience have any input? I'm going to read the changes. Yeah, would you go through them one? Time? Okay, so it's from the it, top. Okay. Number one as is. All right. Yeah. Number, number yeah, two the, as is. They're all as is except number eight is field reservation and usage fees will be levied for users other than the above mentioned leagues, TBD. And then actually the, seven has changed. Uh, fields may not be used uh, for athletic activity for 24 hours after a heavy rain. The recreation director and clerks will post all field information per the field partnership. Yeah, based on the information determined by the field right. as determined by the field partnership. We'll post closures. And I also think um, per. I also think we number two we have to enumerate in consideration of the contribution to the maintenance of the playing fields by the Rhinebeck Soccer League, comma, the Rhinebeck Little League, and the Rhinebeck Lacrosse League. They're all listed below. So I, mean, I want to enumerate it at top. Other, okay. Also known as the Rhinebeck Field Partnership. Um, all fields. Okay, go ahead, Alan. So we're up to number eight. I yeah. would get rid of number eight. You know, we may or may not have a fee and add it. If I'd well, like, it I'd serves, like no, it like serves notice it. that, we're, I'd that, like to keep that it. we're looking at it. Anybody else? I'd, I'd like, like to keep, keep it. it. Okay, number nine. Number nine is as is. Number ten is the usage of an idle field without a reservation is allowed, but such usage may be preempted by a scheduled user. Will be, instead of may be. Well, if there's no... If there is a preemptive. Wait, I thought that we had changed that based on John Nansen's uh, uh, recommendation that everybody has to reserve a field. No, well, he may have did, uh, but I don't think we decided. I don't think we can, we can prevent it. Yeah, so I, I don't. Well, if the fields are locked, we can prevent it. Well, uh, I, I, don't think they, I don't think they should be locked during the season. No, but it might be nice to... to to put, make that a policy, I think, even if you don't enforce it. I think the policy should be everybody has to reserve. Yes. Okay. Then we know. Yeah. Okay. Knowing, knowing full well that some users will disregard and you may even tolerate that. How how about, well, but we're not locking. Or, or are we locking? No. We're not locking. But we're making a policy. How about right up on top, all fields must be scheduled. All schedule, okay. all time on fields must be scheduled. All scheduling field done by, yeah, right on top. Well, just I'll, on number one, I'll just say no usage of athletics fields is, al is allowed without a reservation. Here Can't you go. go. I'm going to be a lawyer in my next no. career. Let's not. Point of clarification. Uh, I just picked up that the Rhinebeck Lacrosse League is formerly known as the Northern Duchess Youth Lacrosse. Northern Duchess. Youth Lacrosse League, not the Rhinebeck Lacrosse League. Good to know. Tell me again. Northern I, I got it. I'd like it. Youth Lacrosse. Um, and then the last one, Alan, I have is all fields will be closed from December, December. 15th through March 31st. Right, I have the dates. Okay can vary as a function of weather and field conditions. Okay. Good start. All right, so we'll get rid of the 10. All in favor of the amendments to the schedule? What? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, so yes, sir. Uh, we now have this resolution on board. Um, and I feel strongly that during this period, so that we're not scheduling special meetings that the town supervisor with the town board member who's the liaison to the rec department and the rec director can make amendments with written notice to the town board and clerks. 
we can change that later, but I think we're going to have a lot yeah. of punting to do in the next month or two. The way I wrote this up was that, that it's really the supervisor that can make the changes in consultation with the liaison. I think it should be all three together. I mean, if Well, as a committee, you mean? Uh, I guess I, I have a problem with the whole concept. Uh, we. I, I think the entire board should uh, do it. Okay. Uh, does anybody uh, else think that? No. I mean, we're just I talking about a three, a two or three, you know, a two-week period. We well, have a, it, I think it, we it, have a majority here for the three people three to people do it, and enough. I'd like to, in the interest, in the interest of being able to turn around changes quickly right, while we're implementing and growing, I, you know, it doesn't have to be me. Somebody else can do it. I don't care, but I think. We have to be able to do that. Otherwise, we're crippled by special yeah. town well, board meetings. We, we can meet on two days' notice. So we have a majority uh, uh, to enforce that. We well, have a majority let, for this. Inspiring I, I'm not, I want to just. I think it's a dangerous precedent. I think that the entire yeah. town we'll take board a vote? should be involved. We could have we'll a just, meeting we'll on an hour's notice as long as we're all there. We actually we have to wait. notice the public, too. Uh, and what is your what is your what is your feeling about my feeling is that you just need the three people you don't need the board to do this that's all alan i agree with ed and it you. stays with the three people and we can change that later uh any further discussion as a, of the resolution any amendments any input any questions any comments uh all in favor aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed opposed the resolution carries okay. thank you I, I just want to take a minute um, to thank you guys. Um, we have worked really hard to get to this place where we're working so cooperatively. We're together. gonna and we're gonna keep doing it. We're it gonna. Is, yeah. It is it right. is so great. Yep. And I feel um, whatever part of this was a change is great. Thank you. Good. You're welcome. Thank you. It, it does feel good. It's exciting yeah. to know that we're moving forward and we're gonna have our new fields in Thompson Mazzarella and. Yeah, thank you. Um, is there any other yeah, let me business move. before the? Can we take a two-minute break? Sure. All right. Um, I have a hard stop in about five minutes. All right, that's good.